women and the economy in the Zimbabwean context. According to Zimstat, of the 13.4 million Zimbabweans, 52% are women and 48% are male. Women are therefore a substantial part of the Zimbabwean economy, yet they face great obstacles to economic participation. During the period June to July 2016, the ZNCC Women's Desk received technical support from USAID SARA to map the policy and regulatory framework affecting women agribusiness entrepreneurs in Zimbabwe. The study focused on two key areas, namely access to capital and access to markets. This also encompassed an assessment of the implications of regulations, policies and practices on women-owned micro, small and medium enterprises, MSMEs, in Zimbabwe's agribusiness sector. The study covered more than 60 informants from the public sector, private sector, CSOs, academia in Harare and Manikaland. The study uncovered that more women than men are self-employed in agricultural production. A recent study shows 53% of micro, small and medium enterprises or MSMEs are owned by women and 43% of MSMEs are engaged in growing and selling agricultural produce or products. In addition, women with work experience are more likely to start a business. Women also tend to start businesses with their own money. In Zimbabwe, it is more difficult for women to obtain formal work experience and grow their savings than men. Women only hold one-third of wage positions outside of on-farm production. Only 25% of middle and senior management positions are held by women. Women have limited access to immovable assets that can be used as collateral for loans. Regardless of education or economic status, a large percentage of women simply earn less than their husbands. Across all women aged 15 to 49, just over 60% earn less cash earnings than their husbands, while only 13.7% earn more. Financial institutions in Zimbabwe are not meeting the needs of women in agribusiness. The reasons for this include, banks prefer urban property as collateral, which women are less likely to hold. Banks are hesitant to accept agricultural land as collateral. Loan terms are not geared towards agribusiness. Microfinance institutions are focused on consumer or payday loans instead of SMEs and agriculture. SMEs in general find it difficult to meet the stringent requirements at banks. However, banks are starting to tailor their products and services to SMEs. I would like to appreciate uh, USAID Sarah for a study that was carried out recently and validated it as a NCC workshop. That research really uh, has helped us as financial services uh, providers in perhaps developing products. We are offering preferential banking terms to women uh, that choose to bank with us. It is a fact that women uh, you know, pay easily when they borrow from banks. So it is a sector that we are also targeting. In that aspect, really, I think for banks to be able to offer tailor-made and uh, relevant products, we need to understand the women as a customer segment better. There is also um, a misconception that um, it's very difficult to formalize business operations. But what we wanted or what we felt that uh, the women needed to know that there are benefits of formalization. We cannot, uh, we cannot underplay that. And there are a number of products that have been also developed. For example, if you go to the registrar of companies, you can register what we call a, a PBC or a private business corporation, which costs uh, the individual about $25. Whereas if you want to register a company, you're looking at maybe a minimum of $150. With a PBC, you can come and open a bank account and begin to transact. Also, the other aspect that was mentioned was the aspect that women do not have uh, security or sometimes even they cannot meet the initial conditions of opening an account, like for example, proof of residence, because you find perhaps they don't own properties or they don't have bills in their own names. Still, we have what we call a cohabitation form where even if they are leasing or they are living with their husband, they can sign that form and come to the bank as a proof of residence and we open an account for the women.
In addition, the RBZ will require banks to establish women entrepreneur desks and support, as well as report sex disaggregated data by the end of 2016. Shupikai has transformed from a small producer of peanut butter in her backyard to supplying big retail chains in Zimbabwe. I started doing peanut butter at my veranda and also I was just making a production of 10 uh, bottles per day. The money to buy ground nuts and the money to buy some raw materials. So I thought for myself to build a, way, a, a workplace where we are now here now at my backyard. And when I started doing it, I had to increase again the production to, um, I was now making eight uh, bags of four ground nuts per day and I had to increase to a ton per day which produces 1,000 bottles every day. Isabel is a dairy farmer located 16 kilometers outside Harare. She covers the full dairy processing value chain and makes cheeses and butters. I'm a small-scale dairy farmer in the Glen Forest area. I've got a head of about 38 Jersey cows, pure Jersey cows. Right now we milk about 25 uh, cows, yielding about 500 liters of uh, milk every day. And from that we process it into uh, different products. We package uh, fresh milk and skimmed milk. We separate the milk into fresh cream from the fresh cream we make butter and we also sell the, the fresh cream. We also make um, cheese like alumi, feta, ricotta. Our main customers are a few uh, uh, private uh, individuals, a few restaurants like uh, Fishmonger in Avondale and Amanzi in uh, Highlands. Women face numerous challenges in accessing markets, such as lack of information on prices, standards and demand, a lack of physical market space, a lack of market linkages and informality. Only about 14% of all estimated MSMEs are registered. Of registered businesses, those that are women-owned tend to have fewer employees and lower turnover compared to male-owned businesses. There are significantly fewer women-owned businesses with turnover of more than $100,000 than there are male-owned or jointly-owned businesses. Women entrepreneurs are particularly affected by the lack of market linkages in the agricultural sector and marketing training courses offered tend to be general and with a short-term focus. Adequate and safe physical market infrastructure is necessary to support informal women vendors, traders and wholesalers. Kulo <laughs> The following key policy recommendations are required on access to markets. A stable macroeconomy characterized by a friendly policy and regulatory framework that engenders certainty and predictability is needed. 
Business associations need to continue to expand their outreach to current aspiring women entrepreneurs. Encourage existing market linkage associations to link up with women agribusiness owners and groups. Develop physical market infrastructure that meets women entrepreneurs' needs by government and donors. Encourage the formation of formal groups and trade and commodity associations among women. On access to capital. To create a more stable and enabling environment for access to capital and business growth, considerable land tenure reviews and reforms will be required. Support financial institutions to introduce more loan products that are tailored to the needs of agribusinesses. Provide young women entrepreneurs with more comprehensive support to launch, remain and grow their business. Build awareness among women in business about the introduction of the collateral registry. Train commercial banks' SME units in gender awareness and mainstreaming. Strengthen linkages between savings and lending groups and MFIs. Lastly, if women account for 52% of the population, then we should leverage this demographic dividend to swing the table and economic tide in our favour. The conference that was convened by Sarah in partnership with ZNCC enabled us to have a unique convening of the women who are practitioners. And this was the beauty of the work, that it brought the women who plow the fields, the women who are in business collecting produce, the women who take produce to the markets. Um, and they were the ones who were then able to speak around the barriers to entry that women face. One of the key elements going forward that Sarah will need to pay attention to is how to pay attention to the social attitudes that women and men face in society differently. The barriers that are to do with tradition, with culture, with beliefs, with norms, with how women are treated as second-class citizens. You know, when you analyze Zimbabwe from a policy point of view in terms of women's rights, what you find is that Zimbabwe is a shining star. Um, all the way from the constitution, right through to law, right through to provisions in legal practice, Zimbabwe has what we call gender equality. So discrimination against women is illegal. But where the barriers are, are in fact in the lived reality. And that is where the next battle is, how we have lived equality in the lives of women and girls. This study was sponsored by USAID. The take home is that we would naturally expect the implementation of those findings. Let's bring them into a tangible realities. In this case, let's move the women of Zimbabwe from being entrepreneurs that are in the bottom line of for being just cross-border traders, bring them now into a producers of that food that they were going to hunt for across the border. And how do we do it? Come up with a template that would show the action plan that is coming to implement these recommendations. It's a good thing that has been started. Let the journey be walked through until the, that intended impact of opening doors for economic involvement of women, this time looking at maximizing their role in entrepreneurship development insofar as agribusiness is concerned.